Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good evening. Welcome back to another episode of the Deductionist podcast. You'll notice I'm flying solo today, and that indirectly relates to the the kind of big update and the reason for uh, uh, last week's absence. Uh, so the, the the short way of telling you this is uh, Adam is now no longer involved with the podcast at all. It's just going to be me waffling on into the void by myself talking about this kind of stuff to you guys. So even more so now, this is going to rely on your interactions so that we can start to get some uh, real discussions going on these particular topics between us all, as opposed to just me and him. Um, for the natural questions that would that would come up on the back of it, no, it's not in relation to a falling out. He just wants to go and do other things, right? Which is, go do it. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a question that I've got from a few people that I've told about it in the meantime, uh, and it and it boils down to something that's essentially, it's essentially very simple. We've got one go at this. <laughs> We've got one go. Do what makes you happy, right? It's uh, uh, there was one. Uh, I forget the context. No, that's not true. I don't forget the context. I don't forget a lot. I didn't know the context when I saw this video. It was um, it was Eddie Murphy walking through, um, walking through uh, uh, some kind of film set or whatever, talking about um, on average humans have. 75 summers, 75 winters, 75 springs, 75 autumns. And chances are when you guys watch this, get to this, you'll be half done. <laughs> right? So you got to do what makes you happy. So Adam's going off and t getting involved in some new hobbies and doing his own thing. And, and I couldn't be happier for him. Am I gutted that this side of it is over? Yes, of course I am. But that just that just means... That we changed tack, which is the reason why I took last week off, so I could kind of uh, figure out how to do that and figure out how best to tell you about all of this that's going to be coming moving forwards. We will we will get into the monographs very shortly, and I will tell you all about it and show you some things um, that I can make you aware of. We will get into that, but I just want to make sure that you guys know uh, seven thirty on average by and large because i i do work on godly hours um but as i'm in control of that now by myself i can control when uh, when the times may change and, and whatnot in that situation we're still looking for regular interviews that we can bring the only thing that will change in terms of the setup is now it is just me it's just me uh, so we're going to write this off as the beginning of season two of our podcast run. And that is really it, right? The the things on the back end are elements that I need to know <laughs> and that you guys, you guys don't really need to know at the moment. And when something comes up that I need to make you aware of, then, uh, uh, then I will. Right? But, so... That's that bit out of the way. The Monographs version 2 is happening. It's happening in a couple of months. So let me just show you the, the link that I will be uh, making you all aware of when this goes out live tomorrow and what will be contained within the breakdown. Oh, I'll just move me out of the way up here. So this is where it'll bring to you. Bring you to, rather. Excuse me. This is essentially the holding screen update um, for for the for the program as it exists at the moment. You can get a, your first look at the cover right there. Let me zoom that in to show you. Hang on. And so essentially what you'd need to do is to head on over to this, find it on Kickstarter if you want to do this right now. 
and then uh, activate the notify me on launch options. The reason being that on said notify me on launch options, we have a number of uh, early bird specials. We have a number of early bird specials that will be going up as part of the perks or bonuses or tiers or whatever they're called on Kickstarter. And um, you'll be at that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Put that on screen. <laughs> Love the front page. Thank you. Um, indirectly inspired by yours truly. The guy on there has, has his bracelets on and a tattooed hand. It's not as tattooed. Um, but there we are. And his beard much more pristinely shaped than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I won't take that as a as an offensive property, but there we are. Um, but yes, so on on the actual uh, uh, site itself, you'll be able to follow the comings and goings of the project, and there are early bird specials. There are early bird specials and discounts that come along with the early bird specials in that way. But well. Here's what we'll do. We'll, we'll go over some of the things that you can get. And then I will talk to you directly uh, about the content. I will talk to you directly about the reason for me writing another one. Because for those of you that have the first, you'll know that it is... Uh, it was a Herculean task in terms of detail to, to kind of put that thing forward. Uh, and, it, and it was more of a more of a more of a kind of log of my learnings over the early years of wishing that I had some kind of companion article to, to help me along the way to learn all this stuff that I had to and chose to and still do in that way. I'm covered in textbooks uh, uh, and the like. <laughs> I like that. It sounds like we're senior citizens at a restaurant with early bird specials. Oh, see, now I now I want to quote Deadpool. <laughs> like, there's anything wrong with eating before five a.m. and getting a discount? Uh, me and Maddie watched Deadpool for Valentine's Day. Shows you the kind of couple that we are. <laughs> um, but yes, so let's talk about let's talk about. Uh, uh, some of the options that you'll that you'll be able to get a hold of. There are there are PDF versions that you can get, and obviously with them being PDFs, you get those delivered right away. Uh, when it when you know everything's ready to go and, and live uh, in in that kind of uh, format, um, and when when I'm saying that I mean when the the Kickstarter has run its course when it comes out. That's when everything gets delivered. So at that stage, when it's when it's gone through, if it makes its total, um, then you will you will get yours sent out straight away. You don't have to wait for the the kind of postage and packaging and printing and all of that kind of thing. Um, so there are early bird offers on that, and then there is the paperback option, which which will be in there as well. Uh, Delivered when so the paperback only ships to certain countries. Uh, you, you you will see that this comes out as Facebook user. Um, so whomever you are, it's certain countries. The certain countries being most of them, um, but it doesn't provide me with the list on the back of it. That's specifically for the paperback. Uh, and in terms of the uh, the the rest of them, I'm just scrolling through there as well. Yes, ships to certain countries, which is most of them, but it doesn't provide me a list of which ones are exempt. Right? If you want to contact me closer to the time, I might be provided that list so I can see. I can give you that information. Um, but either way, you will need to stay connected to the uh, uh, to the project to find out when these things are available and where these things are available for um, so after the paperback we've put together something that's called uh, a detective bundle 
a detective bundle, which is uh, uh, which is my book, uh, The Art of Deduction, and uh, Eliminate the Impossible. The, uh, sorry, A Guide to Deduction by Hannah Rogers and Eliminate the, the Impossible by Alistair Duncan. Wonderful books in their own right, uh, and together it makes makes a really cheeky and wonderful package, which, now that I say that out loud, does teeter on smut. Uh, so I'm going to move past that. <laughs> uh, and so this was the one I was particularly happy about that we could get sorted. There will be hardcover options available. Right, We had to wait a good long while to get the hardcover last time. Uh, we don't have to get that this time. The hard covers will be available through the through the projects themselves if it is that that's what you want to get involved in. And uh, uh, Pascal um, mentioned, uh, we want to have an autograph. There are signed copies that you can get as well from there. There are signed versions that you can buy. And uh, the the signed versions will come with the PDF as well as part of the the, the tier. Um, but you'll also get the, uh, the the signed copy that's involved in there as well. And <laughs> I was kind of joking with the publisher, uh, Steve MX. We interviewed him on the podcast a good long while ago during lockdown. Wonderful human being. Uh, and I was uh, kind of joking with him that I want to put uh, uh, random riddles and folds of paper <laughs> in with whomever it is that goes up for the signed versions. Um, so yeah, and then uh, some of the more um, specialized perks, tiers, whatever you want to call it. Uh, my one-on-ones that I run will be available at a heavily discounted uh, uh, option of doing this, like several hundred pounds in discount. Um, there's also the option for a booking of me to give a, a, a talk to your organization or a group that you are part of on these particular methods. And there is one that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of just moving into at the minute. For those of you that have followed my fleure into writing, you will know that I enjoyed some some wonderful reviews and some wonderful success with the case of the biblical colors which i wrote for the um the mx book of sherlock Holmes stories their charity run that they did or do rather and uh, uh, as of next year will be the 50th edition that's coming out 50th many prolific writers that have been contained within those runs of shorts and uh, uh, yours truly was lucky enough to be one of them, and it went, it went quite well. We got some really wonderful reviews, and so I, I set it, uh, I set upon myself to, um, to write a novel, uh, a novel of which um, has taken a very, a very long and <laughs> kind of uh, drawn out pause. Uh, at the minute, thanks to Omniscient and other things that I'm working on and the real life Sherlock guys and, you know, the various trainings uh, that I do in between. But you'll have the opportunity to uh, uh, buy yourself a character in one of my stories in that if if Pascal were to were to do that, then Pascal would be immortalized in in one of my stories and the kind of foundational premise for the novel itself i can tell you right now is the weaving together of stories from my life so i've kind of taken poetic license with some of them to try and make it work out into uh, one continuous story as opposed to 20 or 30 uh, items that have been pressed together and uh, so that's that's the general consensus of it that's been woven into these uh, into a planned three book um, storyline at the minute. I have options uh, at the minute for for a fourth, but.
but that would just be like an adjacent thing uh, in the same way that you know there was Sherlock series one, two, and three, and then came the abominable the abominable bride, which was adjacent to it before moving into season four. Mine would just be one, two, and three with this little adjacent property there. Should people enjoy them? You know, and should I actually find seconds, moments, minutes in the day to get this stuff done? See that I censored myself. Proud of me. Thank you. <laughs> Phoebe's is sitting in the room with me. Um, I mean, Maddie is too, but she doesn't care if I swear. You know? Anyway. So th those are the, the, the main uh, drop-downs of the perks that you'll be able to get your greasy mitts on. Now, obviously, the earlier you get involved with the project, the more chance you will have at making a choice of which ones that you want, because they are limited in number. Right? There's, some of them are PDFs aren't, obviously, but some, some of the PDF early birds are, based on what we have to go through to get it done. Right. So just to make sure that you have all of that information there to go at. That's the precise nature of of what we're looking at here now to to kind of give you the real skinny on on what the monographs to is. Let me just bring up the copy uh, that I have here and I can tell you all about it straight from the horse's mouth. So just straight from the book's mouth, straight from the horse's book. Straight from the book that belongs to the horse. What am I trying to say? No, no me. No me. You want a sneaky peek? <laughs> That's all you get in now. That's all you get in. I know you sneaky internet lot. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you very much to Craig. Uh, oh, oh, I almost clicked on uh, Where are we? There it is. Add to broadcast. Craig's done it. Pascal's in there. Thanks, guys. I appreciate the support. Um, but yeah, let me tell you, uh, uh, Caitlin's done it as well. Brilliant. Thank you, guys. Well placed bribes right then and there. <laughs> Uh, okay, I have problems. I need subtitles in Spanish. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've got a number of languages in my head, of which Spanish is, is one of them. But uh, I, 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 I do this podcast in English. So um, I'm not adept at the languages to flip back and forth between the two. I kind of have to, have to put my Spanish hat on or put my Arabic hat on or put a different hat on and spend a few moments kind of uh, uh, getting in the zone right there um so uh I, I believe when this goes out live youtube offers the option to have the subtitles on and it will convert it for you but you will need to source a link for that to to find out the technicalities of it because uh i, I don't really know what that is off the top of my head i just know that it's a possibility uh so right why 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 write another one right is it is it strictly is it strictly a cash grab no <laughs> for those of you that, that that have a little bit more knowledge about my private life you will know that well money doesn't really mean anything to me i was born with none and when i die i can't take any of it with me um <laughs> um that's 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 really my my feelings my feelings on that but uh, you will know that these these types of affairs they don't really bring in a great deal of money so it's all about the connection towards the work because that was a question that i was asked i write another one if the first one was so good well their words not mine um oh here we go i like your podcast the best thank you very much but i don't understand all the words but thanks um so anyway why write a second one why write a second one? The, the, the reality of it is, is that I spend at minimum 10 to 12 hours a day, every day, working on this kind of stuff. I, the obsession runs deep. 
and since the the writing of the first one, which came out twenty fifteen, right? That's nearly ten years of additional extra work on these same topics that I can learn more about and help you get to grips with in a more direct and accurate way. Because with every moment of me experiencing and exploring these kinds of things, I pick up a new method. Or because of how well the book did before, there's people that have gone and tried this in places and situations and job roles that I haven't experienced or can't get to because they're in parts of the world that I've never been to. We share stories on this and this educate, we share books and research, all of this kind of stuff comes in. By the way, full bibliography attached in terms of, well, I say full, full that's connected towards the chapters in here. If I were to provide you a full bibliography, that would be very large. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a very large, long, arduous bibliography to make. And um, so the chapters, they kind of break down in a similar way. But whereas uh, if, I, if I've learned a lot more about a particular chapter, I have bumped one of the smaller ones from the original, right? Not in terms of uh, value or, you know, trying to shortcut pages or whatever, but I want to make sure that you guys are being able to focus on the stuff that works, that you can get to grips with immediately. Not that you can't get to grips with or, you know, that it works, all of the other all the, all of the other stuff. But I want to make sure that if I'm waxing lyrical about a topic, I give it you I give it to you completely, as opposed to just trying to get as many bullet points, you know, so it turns into a series of BuzzFeed articles or something like that. So, uh, since then, you know, degrees, diplomas, courses, books have all been done in, in that particular situation. So we can we can take a look at the neuroscientific connection between the between the development of these attributes and how it is possible to learn to look at the world in the way that Sherlock Holmes did. If you ask me, Sherlock Holmes does. <laughs> there was a there was an art uh, exhibit in London years ago, um, and it was called uh, Sherlock Holmes: The Man Who Never Lived and Will Never Die, which is uh, which is particularly apt, personally, right? Personally, I realise that they did that more so uh, to make it sound cool uh, and talk about the whole kind of. Uh, world in a much more grandiose and mysterious way but that's that's my opinion on the matter if you don't like it you can megabyte me computer joke for you anyway so we can look at the, the the kind of neuroscientific connections towards the development of the skills here we can look at uh, uh, more detailed stuff within the realms of uh, uh, memory training uh, and the like. Those of you that take classes with me and sessions with me will know how robust and impassioned uh, uh, my uh, my memory sessions are, and and it's only really to to open up the the, the scope of what is possible because there are a number of people kind of laboring under the misapprehension that it's just creation of a memory palace and done game over when that that really isn't the case there are many more nuances towards everything that need exploring so we're going to get into all of that uh one chapter that i'm i'm particularly uh proud of particularly fond of is the uh the, the chapter on uh reasoning and critical thinking, um, which is kind of the glue that holds observations together, right? If you're going to spot a string of uh, single instances and single occurrences of something happening in order to connect all of them to develop some kind of a hypothesis around what it means or what it could mean or what it's likely to mean, then you're going to need to know how to reason between these things that you've seen within the particular situations and contexts that you're in. Thank you, Pascal. Pascal is one of the, uh, 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 one of the uh, 
chaps from the real life Sherlock group that we run and um, there you go an unfettered uh, uh, opinion right there I didn't beg them weekly let them know about this <laughs> it's coming up I didn't the lady doth protest too much um, then we get into uh, uh, my work on face reading and people reading in that way which is very kind of anti step by step in that you know if you if you read an Ekman, Ekman book they'll talk about the seven emotions or if you read a body language book they'll talk about if you see this then this my methods comprise a lot more information to bear under the the strength of a cognitive load and i realize in saying that the kind of initial analysis is oh it's a lot more is he is he <laughs> bless me is he trying to say oh it's better than no no i'm just just as a as a reference towards capacity there is more information involved because the application of the methods are far more um intuitive and and personal and idiosyncratic and fluid in that way so we take stock of uh, anatomy psychology neuroscience behavioral science behavioral psychology you know all just to get to the proper ways of how to read a face and I'm saying proper, proper as in a, uh, as in an opinion that takes stock of these these uh, variations that exist throughout the world, right? In order to know what one particular face means in one particular situation, you have to have an idea of what that one particular face means in a variety of different situations. So we're going to get into all of that as well. Um, uh, and then we're going to uh, we're, we're going to recover line detection, and I'm all, <laughs> I'm almost tempted that w when when that kind of comes up nowadays is to treat it whenever anybody says that or deception detection, to to treat it like the way my old martial arts instructor used to treat um, a, a karate as a term. Whenever anybody mentioned like said karate, he just used to go. <laughs> spit but kind of, yeah, it kind of through the motion of spitting so people would be uh, immediately connected to what he thought about the practice without them having to say anything when um when i i trained in hypnosis with aunt jacqueline and, Ke and kev sheldrake they did their um their manchurian approach where they spoke about the manchurian candidate and the people that were on the course the immediate rebuttal was like oh the black and white one so these things just happen in order to signal some kind of connection to it. So I'm, I'm kind of tempted now whenever anybody brings up um, a, a, a lie detection, deception detection, whatever it is, just that spit off. To <laughs> Mostly because it's it's wildly, overly, intellectually sexualized in terms of its capacity. So within that particular cha uh, chapter, yeah, you, <laughs> you're going to hear a lot of my strong thoughts, strong opinions on, on particular things. Uh, but I'm also going to get to the root of if you want to develop it uh, as, as, a, as, a, as an eye for detail, then by all means, we can look into some of that stuff as well. What's Craig have to say? Uh, the work is something which is not factored in any other training I have ever seen or been part of. Is it easy? No. Yet it yields real-world results when trained properly. Thank you, sir. Craig, an another one of the chaps. Craig's trained with me for God knows how long now. It's got to have been easily a couple of years. Um, easily. I've not counted, to be honest, Craig, but it's got, it's got to at least be that long. Uh, I, he's, he's been on everything I've done in some form since since the initial monographs came out and then pipes and then the sensory sessions and loads of different stuff so i i appreciate you saying that greg thank you uh I, I, again an opinion i didn't pay for <laughs> but one of the things that i do appreciate about greg and i'll tell you this and he could probably tell you in a, a comment form 
is that when he comes across something, he tries to break it, disprove it, find poke holes, something like that. You know, just to sort of inadvertently confirm its efficacy. One of the most studious people I have ever met. And uh, I, I, it's, it's a great compliment that he has yet to do that with the the the, the madness in my methods <laughs> thank you sir thank you um anyway before this gets into a, a just a complete compliment fest back and forth over showering of love um i bit the bullet and i wrote about how to look at somebody and know what they do for a living right now, I, I will tell you straight that that one particular thing is um, is eight pages in length. And so measure your expectations accordingly with this, because yes, it will highlight the practices that you can use to get to the stage where you can look at somebody and know what they do for a living. But it's also uh, a, a, a series of helping you a series of points that helps you to measure your expectations around that particular topic right because it is one of those things that i get asked about that much that it's kind of been phrased like a holy grail in in my head and yes you can do it yes you can um but we're gonna we're gonna look at the 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 the, the main factors that comprise learning how to do that Right, so I I can't tell you how to break down every single job role that exists around the world because I don't know them all, <laughs> but I can tell you how to use the information you see in other people in order to break down this particular thing, so that a lot of the work is is down on you uh, in that area. Then we're going to look at uh, pets. Right, there's a lot of things that can be learned from what kind of pet someone has and how they choose to look after it. We're going to get into all that. Uh, uh, objects, shoes, phones, tattoos. Again, big, big kind of passion topic of mine. Uh, skin, hands, the body. And I have finished the book with... Um, just some thoughts just some thoughts on on criminal profiling obviously with it being my my vocation um i've got a lot to say on the matter so it is specifically taking all of this information and putting it into the realm of profiling and how you can apply this to the world in which you find yourself using this kind of material and, uh, and then some uh, several pages on training and developing your own training practices for yourself so i really wanted this second version to build on um on the monographs one so that if you got monographs two you could still learn something in isolation that the monographs one would support or if you got monogra the monographs one then the monographs two can highlight everything that you learned in monographs one it's not like you need both they both marry very well together and there's people out there already going what are you doing why are you sales and all i just i'll tell you the truth <laughs> that's one of the things that i've kind of said from minute one like if you go back and watch one of the first trailers i ever did for pipes uh, as in the first iteration of Pipes Problems and Reading People, it was it was 11 to 12 minutes of me telling you who shouldn't buy this <laughs> and what it is and what it isn't, right? So you can make up your own minds that way. But that's precisely what this is. So that's coming in this way. Make sure you sign up at the link that will be contained when this goes out live. But if you want to go and find it now, if you're one of those uh, delightful people who are attractive enough to go to Kickstarter, put in the monographs too and find it there, you can stay in touch with all of the updates that are made um, throughout that whole affair. Which also brings me on to uh, uh, something that I can tell you now more directly about 
Uh, uh, <laughs> there you go. Straight from the horse's mouth. Who wouldn't want both anyway? The first one was great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yes, so Omniscient uh, Insights will be my own training platform where you can stay in touch with all of this. And I've got huge plans for this. Um, obviously, it's taken, like, I, I started working on it just under a year ago, which is why um, my other channel has has seen, uh, you know, a drop in activity, so I could focus on this. Um, but it's getting to the stage now where I can kind of, I can kind of wean it back because, because, of the wonderful things he does. Um, there is one course on there already. Just so you know, there is one course on there already. It's called Productive Communications. And it's in conjunction with the Behavioral Intelligence Academy. And it is a, a, a Bob Pointer's look at effective techniques that you can use to communicate better with the people and the world around you to have better, more open, more honest, more direct conversations, right? It's not a sales pitch. It's just what it is. And he made that with me and Jim Wenzel. So you're getting the three of us. And it's his his intro course to this. And it's on there right now. You can go and check it out. Uh, and if possible, I'll, I'll put a link in there when this goes out tomorrow as well. But my my first release that I'm just I'm finishing off the last things for all I have to do I can tell you now all I have to do is edit the information in the checkout when you see it and finish off the information that's connected to the landing page and the beginnings of the funnel. But this is um, pipes problems and reading people two two and. Again, for those of you that have trained with me will know that through the various different courses, I don't repeat stuff, right? All of my material is tiered in terms of what I determine to be, you know, novice, beginner, and so on and so forth. And this is uh, this is the entire package within that. Uh, I like I, Pipes Problems of Reading People came from me wanting to call it a professional inductive process connecting towards my fondness for reading uh, and reasoning and critical thinking in that way to connect the information pertained within all of this. Like I could give you oh, a, 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 a billion bloody iterations of this. Like um, there was an incident a, a few years ago where I walked into a doctor's office and looked at the doctor's water bottle and then asked her when her daughter's wedding was. This was a plain water bottle. There was no, like, my daughter's getting married, one of these types of things. It was just a plain water bottle, and that was the information that connected towards that end game. I purposely phrased it that way so it sounds much more Sherlocky. but all I've really done is I've removed the critical thinking from it. That's all it really was in those moments. You'll find that during the stories, when Sherlock says something clever and Watson asks him to explain it, all Sherlock is doing is exp is explaining his critical thinking process. That's why it's so important in this scenario. And Pipes is is very much building on what the first what the first one did to go further into the topics. And with it being video, uh, there's more that I can do. There's more that I can show you, and there's more that I can teach you. Uh, into into applying these particular methods throughout everything. So there's the first project is on is on mindset and reasoning. The neuroscientific connection towards brainwaves. Then we move on to memory. Then we move on to my own thesis, if you want to call it that way, uh, on on reading people, which I refer to as human thermodynamics. Then we move on to objects, deception, detection. And then putting it all together to finish, right? So that will be going out very soon. And uh, just so you guys know, if you do watch the podcast, you'll be getting discounts and offers and all that typical shtick uh, that goes out uh, through that through that side of it. Um, when it goes out through the funnels and whatnot, it will be going out at full price. Um, 
But if you watch this, this is my way of saying thank you. <laughs> this is my way of sticking around uh, uh, and, uh, you know, showing my gratitude towards you guys. Because realistically, I'll never get to meet all of you. But it's because all of you that I get to sit here and live the life that I do. So I'm very grateful. Uh, so to that end, I'm going to love you and leave you. One last time, go to Kickstarter, put in the monographs too, sign up. And uh, with that in mind, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.